Just wanted to announce that in addition to 10 guest speakers at this year's Tiny House Summer Camp 5 in Vermont, a fully hands-on building workshop, we'll be bringing out some off-grid lightweight Solivore solar ovens as part of live demonstrations, and we still have more live demos to announce. Check these guys out too, solivore.com. Hey, I'm Deke from RelaxShacks.com in Taos, New Mexico. Anyways, we're here at the Earthships. I'm with uh, here with Ashley, who's giving us so kind to give us a tour. Why don't you uh, tell us your title and such? Uh, so my name is Ashley Turin, and I work in the educational facility at Earthship Biotexture. All right, so we're going to go in this home today. This is one of the newer homes built by Earthship Biotexture. Uh, it is a two-bedroom, single-bathroom home with an attached garage. Uh, we like to call it the Wabey House. Uh, Mike Reynolds, the owner inventor of Earthship Biotexture, he does like to name all of the homes. So welcome to the Wabey House. All right, so we're going to start by just entering uh, the drive-in, um, the, the garage, I guess. <laughs> so this is a full two-car two garage. Okay. And so we're going to come on in. So all of the earth ships, they're made with about 45% recycled material. So you'll see a lot of bottles, cans, and car tires, uh, especially if you come to Taos and, and see some mid-construction build. But some of this bottle work is uh, very tastefully done, okay. and it kind of acts as almost like a stained glass window, but it's mostly filler for all the walls. So very easy building, and you don't have to purchase as many materials when you have something filling the inside of the wall. Just throw a couple parties, you're good to go, right? Yeah, exactly. What, what's the bottle of choice? What does it seem to be? Um, so blue bottles are like gold. Like the Luna de Luna wine? Or, yeah, yeah, so this is actually a very tasteful wall. This is all clear bottles mm -hmm. here. Uh, but in different homes, uh, all the homes are custom all over the world. So you'll see a lot of different colorful bottle walls. Blue is our favorite. Uh, some of the uh, liquor bottles and wine bottles are preferenced. Well, come on in. Um, this is the main greenhouse hallway. We like to call it a buffer zone, okay. especially during the winter time. This will hold a little more heat in here so that we're almost tricking the interior space into thinking that this temperature out here is the outside temperature. Uh, during the summertime, what we can do to cool this space off a tiny bit is to pop some of these windows. Open. I'm noticing overhead too yep, with the ropes. We've got yeah. the skylights popped right here. Uh, these are all gravity operated skylights. That's fantastic. And so yeah. uh, this gets a lot of nice airflow coming in and out of the home. Airflow is obviously key. But when we come into the <laughs> interior space of the home, um, you can actually feel quite a temperature shift in here. Oh, and very noticeable. Yeah. yeah, very noticeable temperature shift. It's a lot cooler in this room. It is close to 90 outside right now. And it's probably, if I were to guess, about 68 to 71 degrees in here. Um, but this home, because it is tapping into the cool earth temperature, this wall back here will stay about a constant 55 to 58 degrees. This is what we call our thermal mass temperature. And uh, this temperature will stay pretty constant all year round. And so whether it's 100 or negative 30 outside, you've got a constant thermal mass wall, kind of similar to uh, a cave temperature or a basement temperature. Uh, are those returns over there? What are those used for? These are actually for? cooling tubes. Cooling tubes, so all right. So we are in the newest global model yeah. Earthship. All of the global model earth ships, they have these cooling tubes. Just taking advantage of the cool underground yeah. temperatures. Yeah. So you can see this goes all the way through the berm of the house. Mm -hmm. So just like a, a cave or a basement, we do have about 15 to 20 feet of compacted earth behind wow. the house. That much. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or if you had a natural hillside on your property, you could build right into the hillside and it will tap into that cool earth temperature and that thermal mass temperature can store itself in the walls. Yeah. But this tube goes all the way through uh, a few tire courses up because this is a tire wall. So compacted earth tire wall. That's earthquake proof, fire proof, uh, no off gassing from the tires. Um, this goes all the way through the berm, that big mass of dirt behind the house, and it's open on the other side. So if screened, you want, I'd imagine, yeah, right? Yeah, screened in, so no little critters. Rattlesnakes or whatever. Yeah, rattlesnakes. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of those in this area. Yeah. But uh, 
All of the air, now if you have everything vented properly, this cooling tube exposed my windows to the greenhouse and also those skylights that we showed you, yeah. this will act as a natural convection. And so the air will get pulled through and it'll cool down as it travels underground and then all the warm air will get pushed out and up through the yeah, skylights. Yeah, so as it naturally rises, you're pulling all the coolness. Yeah, so yeah. it's almost like a geothermal energy, but no electricity, no mm -hmm. moving parts. It's all pretty natural. And so this is kind of our natural form of air conditioning. Yeah, Mike Oler, if you're familiar with Mike Oler, the Mole Man, or Malcolm Wells, Rob Roy, yeah. they used similar practices or different variations of it. It's just, it's so simple, but yeah, it works so, so well. it's so simple and you can feel the cool air coming through here. Uh, it feels like air conditioning, but it just gets more cool air in the house, pushing out the warm air, um, and obviously getting fresh air into the yeah, house. Uh, because this wall is, you know, you notice there's no uh, windows on this wall. And it's because this is a complete tire structure, uh, rammed earth tires coming all the way up. Uh, and so this is just earth behind this wall for about 15 to 20 feet. Now, uh, up above, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Up above us, though, these are some pretty serious rafters. Yes. These are called vigas here in Taos, New Mexico, or just in the New Mexico area in general. This is a very traditional building style. So these vigas, I believe that they are made out of pine. They are sustainably harvested it looks in it, the yeah. area. Um, this is very traditional for a Taos kind of adobe looking home. And these walls, these are all adobe walls, which are made out of sand, straw, mud, and water. These ones have a light coat um, of uh, paint over top of them, but you can see the flecks of straw oh, yeah. uh, in here. I wouldn't use any kind of paint. Uh, you don't want to use a latex paint. There's a specific type of paint that goes well with the mud. So if you're doing mud walls, earthen walls, make sure you know what you're putting over yeah. top of it. But How much earth is up above us? Um, you know, seeing as these rafters are just so huge. Well, this is very traditional roof. Um, you've got your, um, these vigas, obviously. We've got insulation above these planks. Uh, and then when, and you can head to the roof over at our uh, educational facility. Uh, we won't go on this one, but you'll see a lot of metal pro paneling. So the roof is not underground. The metal pro paneling on the roof is because all of these homes, they collect all their own water from rain and snow. So all of these homes, they are completely off grid doing water collection from rain and snow, um, energy control. Um, you know, we don't have to heat or cool the house because of this thermal mass wall and the southern exposed windows. Uh, this is passive solar gain at its best right here. So we get just enough light and heat to make it so the home is about 65 to 75 degrees inside the home at any period during the year. So like I said earlier, whether it's 100 outside or negative 30, you'll have a constant temperature in here. Um, but we also do energy collection from uh, solar panels or windmills. Uh, we also use about 45% recycled materials in every single build. And um, my favorite component of the home is the gray water system. We recycle the water here. So say you guys, anybody, was washing the dishes, taking a shower, um, doing the laundry. We do have laundry machines yeah, uh, in wow. our ships. That's all the first use for the water. When this water goes down the drain, it actually goes through a really light grease and particle filter before it hits all the planter beds. Yeah, I was wondering if it came out right here. I see there's, a, the there's a buffer zone of plants here as well. There is, and this, um, if you peek in here, and it'll be hard, um, this, yeah. that will be a light uh, grease and particle filter. Oh, wow. So inside there, we just have a really light pantyhose that can catch anything yeah. coming out. Um, but some people like to turn that into a worm bin. Yeah. We'll start it off as a very easy grease and particle filter, and if the homeowner wants to turn it into a worm bin, they can do that on yeah. their own. But it goes through a system like that before all the water hits all the planter beds in the home. So the plants, after you take a shower or take a drink of water or run the laundry, the plants get all the second use for the water, and then that gray water gets pumped to the toilet tank. 
So the toilet water is the third use for the same water in the home. And because the plants do such a nice job of filtering that water, mm -hmm. uh, you'll notice that it doesn't smell funny, it doesn't look funny, uh, it looks like normal toilet water. And if your dog drinks out of it, it's not the biggest deal so, in the world. So basically, <laughs> if you go into an earth ship and see that the plants are doing so well, you know that someone's hygiene isn't up to par. Oh, they're not, they're not yeah. showering enough. They're not showering enough. Yeah. But just because I use the sink as an example, just so everybody knows, the sink water actually goes right to black water, just just in case of any food particles that get through. Um, it's mainly the shower, the laundry, uh, all of that water goes right to the plants. After the, the plants and then the toilet, then that black water goes to a very traditional septic unit outside before it goes to the black water botanical cell, AKA all the exterior gardening. So it goes through a leach field outside and empties into a lined planter bed outside is the fourth use for the same water. So those plants really flourish. Uh, you can grow food out there um, with the black water as long as it's something with a trunk or a stem. You wouldn't want to grow root vegetables in your black water. What's the average rainfall around this area? We only get in between 7 and 11 inches of rainfall. Oh, okay. Let's keep walking while I answer this. Uh, you guys will see a very uh, unique fridge. Uh, this is a DC refrigerator. It's very insulative, thick walls. Um, it runs off direct current. We use both DC and AC wow, look in at the, the house. Uh, See how thick this insulation is? Insulation there, yeah. Very it's a sun frost, right? I think I saw This is a yeah. sun frost. It's made here um, in the U.S. This home, uh, and I'm not exactly sure how much this one has. I think it has about 8,000 gallons of water storage. Um, we'll see the catchment space on mm -hmm. the roof. But if you've got light rainfall, like we do here in Taos, you want a lot of water storage and you want a lot of roof storage. Um, or you want roof space, I'm sorry, to catch that water. Uh, here's just a um, yeah, washer dryer. Luxurious. And these cabinets we were talking about before, they're all handmade. Yeah, these are all handcrafted. These are really, they're simple yet classy. Like oh, I, re yeah. I really like the finish. Um, Mike Reynolds, the owner inventor, I mean, uh, this company is really known for beautiful uh, handcrafted cabinets, doors, windows. Even the windows. simple butterfly hinges. Yeah, they're beautiful. And um, he's also known for the tire walls. That's yeah. what everyone knows Mike for, is the tire walls. They call him the garbage warrior. Here's bedroom number one uh, with a bathroom. Um, this is a very modern bathroom. This one even has a very modern tub. Some of the older Earthships have a lot of handcrafted tubs. They look very whimsical. Um, this one's very traditional. Um, but to get back to the water question, since we're standing in the bathroom here, let me get some lights on for oh, you. Um, we're standing in the bathroom here. Um, if we did not use the water four times and have so much water storage and large roof spaces, there is a chance that we could run out of water if we do get light rainfall. But the Earthship was invented in this area, so there is kind of a, a rough calculation of how much uh, storage space that you want and how much roof space that you want. But if you were to get two inches of rainfall a year, that's when I would be a little concerned. Um, my house has 8,000 gallons of water storage and I never run out. Um, but let's head through the greenhouse to bedroom number two. Okay. Um, and you can see this beautiful floating headboard right here. Mike loves to do these in the homes because it gives a lot of storage space behind the headboard. Uh, for all your clothes, um, so this is kind of the closet for this home, and it's just right behind the headboard. Yeah, just simple open closeting, but it works. Yeah. So we got we have to go through the greenhouse to get to bedroom number two. So we'll head back out here, and you can see more of this beautiful bottle work coming through here. Yeah, the doors too with the like yeah, know, hexagonal is, tops yeah. or half hex tops. This is, this is Mike's, uh, you know, this is his signature look. He does a lot of this, um, this style of window, door, cabinetry. But like I said, this is a newer model of Earthship. So this is a little more uh, streamlined and a little more classy, so to speak. It's nice because it shows the average homeowner that you can live in an off-grid home and still have all your modern amenities um, and still feel good about how you're living. And uh, let's pop in here. There's another bedroom, or sorry, another bathroom in this in this. Uh, with the more this custom home. shower area. Yeah, this yeah. is a custom shower. So uh, unfortunately, I can't get you into one of the older models of uh, Earthships. But if you can imagine this shower, but uh, as a handcrafted tub, we do a lot of handcrafted tub with the 
cans and bottles, and they look like pieces of artwork. Another grease trap over here I mm -hmm. see as well yeah. with plants around it. Kind of yeah. cool. You could garden while you're going to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can see all the storage space in here, more of Mike's. Um, yeah, it's a, Mike's it's a heck of a lot of storage. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was uh, a point in time where folks, they wanted a little more storage in the Earthship. And so since this is one of the newer homes, Mike tried to add as much storage as he could possibly fit. So you can see and there is another cooling tube in here. So you oh, can yeah. circulate the air a little uh, more through here. Um, there's not too much uh, temperature problems in this room at all because the tire wall kind of goes all the way around in a circle in this home. So this, or in this room, so this room stays really, really nice and cool. So. I usually tour a lot of tiny houses where the beds are about 20 inches wide. This is certainly this, a different case here. Yeah. That's bigger than some of the tiny houses I tour on my YouTube channel. Yes. Tiny houses are amazing. I love them. I would like to have one. They're a little more mobile. This is definitely not mobile. Oh, no. These tire walls. But I mean, there's one, a different intention here, too. There's a different intention. I mean, these tire walls, they, they weigh anywhere from two to 400 pounds per tire once you compact them. That's why the wall is said to be earthquake-proof and fireproof and <clears throat> all of this good stuff. But the tiny house you can take on the move with you. <laughs> This is very stationary. And these tiny plants, um, you can see in here, this is, since this is a brand new Earthship, we just have little baby plants going right now. Uh, Japanese cucumbers, uh, peppers, tomatoes, figs. We've got mammoth basil. We've got kind of a little bit of everything. Oh, it smells fantastic in there as I walk around. I know. This place is Doesn't great, it? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the tour too, Ashley. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, Website-wise, if they want to find more, why don't you plug that? www.earthship.com. Um, that website has not only a lot of our information uh, regarding the house, but educational programs that we do here. Cool. So you could do an internship with us or the academy program where you actually take classroom hours and build on the site with the crew. Hopefully, you'll be able to... Uh, build one of these things by the time your month is done. It's certainly inspiring. I've seen the again the documentary and uh, have some of the books from Michael Reynolds and Oh, yeah, and thank you for the fantastic tour. It's like you've done this tour before I'm guessing. Oh, yeah <laughs> Once right. or twice. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye guys